Keith, I'm so excited you were able to come out here. I'm sorry that it feels like a winter day. I first heard about Keith Kirsten through some mutual friends who promised the next time he was in the States, they'd bring him around for a visit. I only wish it had been warmer during our time in the garden. But being a keen plants person with a reputation that follows him from Johannesburg to New York and all points in between, Keith saw past the skies and threatening snow and dove into talking about plants with his trademark passion. We, we're temperate where I garden and uh, we get extremely cold at night in the winter. I'm near a river so the temperatures really drop. So I can only grow things that can really take the cold. Yeah. Whereas in other parts of South Africa where it's a bit more warmer climate they can grow in a lot more of those kind of things that can almost become subtropical plants yeah yeah they can still last outside well i think it's interesting that i think so often we think that what you grow in south africa and what i grow here well they're so different that you couldn't but that's not true at all well you have to overwinter pots and tubs of agapanthus for example we grow them out of doors in most parts of south africa and they grow very well this is our herbaceous border and we're right here well it's actually a mixed border because i've got uh, shrubs the butterfly bush and yeah. other things in it and roses because i think any garden needs a good design yeah um very good structure so that when the other things and, and like your winter plants are off that the structure still holds the whole garden and skeleton of it together. You, you've got to have that framework. Yeah, you really do. And that's what we've done here, mainly with just a few workhorse plants. We've used uh, holly and boxwood uh, and roses. So Keith, what sort of workhorse plants do you use in South Africa? Well, we use some of the traditional um, Northern Hemisphere plants like buxus, and we've used also lots of viburnum. Yeah. And then um, form plants like grass plants, conifers, quite a few conifers that even last well. Um, in the coastal regions where they take the wind, yeah. salt, the salt laden winds and the wind. So they do pretty well as well. Um, and then of course some of the grass plants and roses, even though they don't look great in the winter, they good structural plants yeah. during, during, the, during the summer months. I think they're too, they're, they're often overlooked and they're very good structural plants. I mean, down at each end of this garden, we have a big ring of rugosa, Saravan fleet, which has yeah. very beautiful pale pink uh, blossoms on it. Yeah. And we use holly as well, various varieties of yeah. holly which is a great plant. This garden is all about trialing all kinds of new varieties, even some of the old ones. Right. Yeah. Well, I think trialing is very important. Um, and as a modern day kind of plant hunter, you know, things are being moved around the world. And even in South Africa, we trial just like this. And it's good to find out just how these gardens plants perform yeah. for the gardener. Yeah, and indeed. Just, and before they get into production kind of thing. You know, Keith, the reason I laid this garden out the way I did is that so we could keep up with exactly what's planted where. We well, I think trial plants have to be kept orderly so that you can really you know, know where they are and what they're doing. And I think the great thing is that you can also test the performance for the length of flowering period, uh, how they take the heat, you know, how they right. take the different moisture levels or even the dryness in perhaps a very dry part of the summer. And I think that it's important to see just how they do perform before they get grown and, and produced for the market. It's a big outdoor laboratory. Absolutely. Super. Well, I think it's fantastic. And uh, long may you carry on trialing and, um, <laughs> and I'm going to carry on looking for new plants and also trialing back home and uh, and bring these ideas back to America and maybe bring your ideas into South Africa as well. Well, I want to certainly apply some of yours right here. Now, I mentioned before that the skies were threatening snow. Well, just look at this. This was the morning after Keith's visit. Can you imagine to have a friend from South Africa and then we get a snow? The Garden Home Retreat was certainly beautiful, covered in Mother Nature's blanket of white. Here's some of the images the crew captured during the morning light.